Hello, my name is Terry Dean. I'm one of the application specialists here at Excitec. The DWG Compare Utility compares two drawings with each other and can be activated with or without the drawings open. If no drawings are opened, DWG Compare can be activated via the application menu from over here. Once chosen, I can choose which two drawings to compare. So if I choose this version, version 1, and this version, version 2, and then select Compare. All the cat then does is opens up a drawing which clearly shows the differences between the two versions. If both drawings are already open, as, as they are in this case, then DWG Compare can be obtained from two locations. One via the application menu again, but this time it will be within the drawing utilities menu, right here. Alternatively, via the new Collaborate tab on the ribbon here, and there we have DWG Compare. The active drawing, the open drawing, which is currently this one here, version 1, that will be recognised as DWG1, and DWG2 will need to be browsed for. When I hit Compare this time, a third drawing is created and opened, and clearly indicating the differences between the two drawings and an optional rev cloud surrounds the, the, uh, the changes also. Gray indicates elements are unchanged, identical and common to both. Green indicates existing modified elements and their original location. And red indicates modifications made to existing elements and also new additional elements. Whilst within this third comparison drawing, a compare contextual ribbon has appeared and a number of settings that we can use to vary the appearance of our comparison. For example, we can change the colour coding here. We can also turn off or on the revision card and it can also be resized and reshaped. So there's the reshaping and there's the resizing. Like so. We can also uh, cycle through the change sets. Like so. In addition to that, we can choose whether we want to compare text or hatching also. The command line system variable compare props determines whether or not changes made to the element properties, for example, color, layer, line weight, and transparency, etc., will be included within the compare analysis. So simply by typing in compare props, it can be set to any of the appropriate numbers as shown or simply add stroke combine the numbers together to enable those properties to be analysed. Main views have traditionally been created via the view manager. AutoCAD now provides a more streamlined method of creating named views. Within the view tab, name view panel, there is now new view. After entering a name for the view, select define window and create the view and it's done. I'll create two views in this manner, overall plan and training room. So I select new view from here, type in overall plan, define window, put a window around there like so, accept that. Okay, that's the first one. Now I'll create one called training room. Same procedure. And that's done. When switching to a layout, the name views previously created can be found via the ribbon within the layout tab. Over here in the layout viewports panel, we now have a new function called insert view. That displays a gallery of the named views that we created earlier. 
From the gallery, we simply click and drop the views onto the sheet. Having done so, we can select the viewport and the triangle essential grip can be used for setting the scale, which by the way will be automatically locked. If I use the central square grip, I can reposition and of course the corner grips can be used for any minor adjustments to the viewport like so. So if I do the same with the training room name view and drop that onto the sheet also, that just so happens to be at the right scale anyway. Now maybe at this point I realize I need another view but it doesn't necessarily have to be named. So if I come up here to the gallery and choose new view that will allow me to create an unnamed view. Now this is a method that I could have used on the previous two views and that is I can right click before placing the view, choose the relevant scale and then reposition. This feature introduced within AutoCAD 2017 which has been enhanced will publish your views to the cloud and they can be viewed within the free online viewer Autodesk Viewer. As before, a link can be sent to whoever is required to view, review, measure and comment on the views within the Autodesk Viewer. You must be signed into your Autodesk account before you can use this utility. Share View is available via Publish within the application menu or the new Collaborate tab on the ribbon Share Panel. Selecting Shared View from the ribbon opens a new palette called Shared Views. This palette can be used to help manage the shared views as well as create them. So if I go to the Collaborate tab, the Share panel and choose Shared Views, here is that palette. Now if I choose New Shared View, you can see a dialog box appears which enables me to rename the view and also choose whether it's only the current view that I share or I can share the model tab and all the other layout tabs as well. When I choose share now this dialog box appears to indicate to me or to inform me that background processing will be enabled. And now when I hit proceed on the status bar in the bottom right hand corner now there is an animated icon which is indicating that something is going on and after a short while a notification bubble will come up to tell me that it's actually been done. So as you can see the notification bubble has indeed appeared and we can use this to actually open up the view within the browser. We shouldn't take too long. At the same time an email will be sent also informing us of this view and we can also use that link within there to open up the viewer as well. And it's in here that there are a number of tools that can be used to carry out the view and comment and do the measuring as well. If I now go back into AutoCAD, you'll see that the palette doesn't actually indicate there's a, been any views shared. But if I carry out the refresh here, that will show me a little thumbnail of the image that's actually been created. And uh, it informs me that the, it expires in 31 days. The default expiry time is 30 days, uh, however within here we can extend that, uh, we can also delete this view and we can also um, open up in the viewer of course, but also create a link which can then be emailed, that can be copied and then emailed to anybody who needs to have access to this view. This video focuses upon the external reference XREF enhancements. In particular, XREF specific system variables and the new XREF layer property control. I'm about to attach an X reference to this host drawing. A new command line system variable called XREF layer allows the predefining of a layer onto which any X reference will be attached. Even if this layer does not exist, AutoCAD will create it. However, this layer will only appear within the layer properties palette and layer drop down after the xreference has been attached. So if I now type in xref layer and call it 
XREF. As you'll see, within the layer drop-down, there is no XREF layer. However, if I attach this X reference to my host drawing, that layer has now been produced, and there it is. And if I select the X reference, you can see up here in the layer drop down that it is actually attached to it. Still on the subject of command line accessible system variables, XREF override being one of them which controlled the by layer behavior of layers within external references. This is now found within the layer properties palette within the layer settings dialog box, which is now here. Now, when an XREF layer is overridden, a XREF property filter will automatically be generated here. So if I were to make the uh, XREF layer furniture blue and these two service layers grey. You can now see with under here underneath the XREF layer filter we now have an XREF override filter. So when I select that it will only show me those layers that have an override in effect. Layer property override highlighting has been available for some time. Within the layer properties manager, there is now a button, which is over here, that will either enable or disable um, override highlighting. Even with the override highlighting disabled, it's still recognizable by means of these uh, icons here in the status column to recognize which layers have indeed been, been overridden. And if I were to right click on any one of these layers, or indeed on the filter itself, I can reset it and then that filter will now disappear. The setting Viz Retain is no longer available within the Options dialog box. It is now within the XREF Layer Settings dialog box here. In previous versions of AutoCAD, if VisRetain was enabled, none of the properties changed within the X reference would update within the host drawing. Now it is possible by means of these tick boxes to allow those items checked to update within the host if they are altered within the X reference file. In this example, you can see I've enabled on off and I've also enabled line weight. If I now close this dialog box and close this palette too, and then open the X reference itself, I will now go into the layer properties palette and uh, change those on off uh, features. So if I turn off my layer furniture and included in my uh, requirement is I wanted my line weights to update too. So if I go in there and set that to a lot thinner line weight, close that down, save the X reference, I can close that. We're now told that this needs to be reloaded. So if I now reload that, you can see that those properties that I allowed to be overridden have now been overridden. Of course, if those layers had already been overridden within the host itself, they would have remained unaffected. Well, that concludes this AutoCAD 2019 new features video. I hope you found it useful. Please check out our other videos. Thank you for watching.